Pier Giorgio Frassati was born in Turin, Italy on April 6, 1901. Pier Giorgio was educated by the Jesuits and developed the practice of daily mass and communion. His parents were not pleased at this. As bourgeois liberals, they feared that he might become a priest. In an era of strong anti-Catholicism, Pier Giorgio was deeply committed to the church and had a great love for Mary. He never hesitated to share his deep spiritual life with his friends. He was also an athlete, was interested in cars, mountain climbing, amateur photography, and he loved skiing and fencing. At the age of 17, in 1918, he joined the St. Vincent de Paul Society and dedicated much of his free time to serving the sick and the needy, caring for orphans, and assisting the demobilized servicemen returning from World War I. His faith drew its strength from the daily Eucharist. He was known to spend whole nights in adoration before the Blessed Sacrament. Witnesses say that when Pier Giorgio was at prayer, it was an unforgettable sight. His charity did not simply involve giving something to others, but giving completely of himself. To a friend who asked him how he could bear to enter those dirty and smelly places, he answered, Remember always that it is to Jesus that you go. I see a special light that we do not have around the sick, the poor, the unfortunate. He decided to become a mining engineer, studying at the Royal Polytechnic University of Turin, so he could serve Christ better among the miners, as he told a friend. He was very popular at university and started a group of young women and men who would help each other to study and pray. Realizing that charity was not enough, Pier Giorgio was always ready to champion Christian social principles and movements. Convinced that only Christianity and its social doctrines could bring peace and order to people, he supported family salaries, workers' participation in business profits, rural savings banks, and agrarian reforms. Just before receiving his university degree, he contracted poliomyelitis, which doctors later speculated he caught from the sick whom he tended. After six days of terrible suffering and neglected by his family, Pier Giorgio died at the age of 24 on July 4, 1925. His last preoccupation was for the poor. His funeral was a triumph. The streets of the city were lined with a multitude of mourners who were unknown to his family, clergy and students, and the poor and the needy whom he had served so unselfishly for seven years. On May 20, 1990, in St. Peter's Square, which was filled with thousands of youth, St. John Paul II beatified Pier Giorgio Frassati, calling him the man of the eight beatitudes. In his homily at the Mass, the Pope said, Today's celebration invites all of us to receive the message which Pier Giorgio Frassati is sending to the men and women of our day, but especially to you young people who want to make a concrete contribution to the spiritual renewal of our world, which sometimes seems to be falling apart and wasting away because of a lack of ideals. By his example, he proclaims that a life lived in Christ's spirit, the spirit of the Beatitudes, is blessed, and that only the person who becomes a man or woman of the Beatitudes can succeed in communicating love and peace to others. He repeats that it is really worth giving up everything to serve the Lord. He testifies that holiness is possible for everyone and that only the revolution of charity can enkindle the hope of a better future in the hearts of people. God gave Pier Giorgio Frassati all the external attributes that could have led him to make the wrong choices. A wealthy family, very good looks, health, and being the only heir of a powerful family. But Pier Giorgio listened to the invitation of Christ, come and follow me.